I mean, I told you not to go in that house. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie characters who surprisingly survived. You just couldn't let me go, could you? Today is tomorrow. It happened. You're here. I'm here. For this list, we'll be looking at big screen characters who surprisingly made it to the end of their respective film, despite what audiences probably thought. Plot details will be discussed, so a spoiler warning is in effect. Who are you most surprised to see survive? Let us know in the comments below. Now on to the list of characters who probably have nine lives. Let's go. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, The Joker, The Dark Knight. Serving as one of the most memorable movie villains of the 21st century, Heath Ledger's Joker was almost guaranteed to die. Enough from the clown. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Let's not blow this out of proportion. You think you could steal from us and just walk away? Yeah. I'm putting the word out. 500 grand for this clown dead. Batman isn't really one to off his victims, but still, the bad guys do die, including Jack Nicholson's Joker in the 1989 Batman. <laughs> However, things were different for the Dark Knight. Batman finds the Joker using Gotham's phones and after a brief fight, tosses him off the tall building. Not being one for murder, Batman saves the falling Joker with his grappling hook and leaves him dangling for the police. You just couldn't let me go, could you? <laughs> he nearly encounters the same fate as Nicholson's Joker, but that wouldn't have been very original or surprising now, would it? Number 9. Snake Plissken, Escape from New York Serving as one of John Carpenter's greatest action movies, Escape from New York stars Kurt Russell as a federal prisoner named Snake Plissken. Snake is ordered to save the president from a crime-ridden Manhattan, which has been converted into a giant maximum security prison. You go in, find the president, bring him out in 24 hours, and you're a free man. 24 hours, huh? I'm making you an offer. Certain death is pretty much guaranteed, and supporting characters repeatedly express surprise at Snake being alive. Wait a minute. I know who you are. Yeah, but I heard you were dead. And despite all that he has put through, Snake does indeed survive. The mission proves a success, the president is saved, and Snake is successful in embarrassing the president in front of the summit. You gonna kill me now, Snake? I'm too tired. Maybe later. Number 8. Gare Grimsrud, Fargo. <laughs> This Coen Brothers masterpiece sees Gare Grimsrud and Carl Showalter acting as main antagonists as they are hired by Jerry Lundegaard to kidnap Jerry's wife, Jean. Of course, things immediately go off the rails due to Carl's careless ineptitude. And while audiences may have expected both to die, Carl is the only one who faces death, being famously murdered by Gare and fed through a wood chipper. Gare himself is simply shot in the leg by Marge and arrested, leaving him one of the few survivors of this grim and bloody tale. Number 7. Dominic Toretto, Furious 7 This isn't the type of franchise to permanently off-beloved characters, especially the main character played by the very bankable Vin Diesel. But things were looking quite dire for a second there. The climax of Furious 7 sees Dom attempting to crash his car into Jaconde's helicopter. However, the car narrowly misses the helicopter, plunges into the collapsed parking garage, and falls to the street below. By all accounts, the man is dead. However, Letty brings him back with the power of love or something, and Dom regains consciousness with a quip. I remember everything. I remember it all. It's about time. He's then able to see off Brian in one of the decade's most famous endings. You'll always be with me. 
and he'll always be my brother. Number six, Rod Williams, Get Out. Jordan Peele is great for subverting expectations, especially when it comes to the comedic characters. How can I get in trouble for patting down an old lady? It's standard procedure. It's a well-known fact that funny supporting characters don't survive horror movies. Rod was by far the funniest character in Get Out, and while he wasn't part of the main action in upstate New York, we still expected him to die. However, Rod actually proves quite competent as a friend and detective and actually rescues Chris at the end of the movie. I mean, I told you not to go in the house. Peel would again allow the funny character to live in us, as Gabe survives with the rest of his family. So if y'all want to get crazy, we can get crazy. Now the cops are already on their way. Number five, Cal Hockley, Titanic. This is completely unacceptable. What made you think that you could put your hands on my fiance? Look at me, you filth. Cal. What do you think you were doing? Cal was just begging to die. He's the main antagonist of the movie, well, besides that dreaded iceberg. He's a slimy character that the audience grows to hate. He serves as the primary obstacle between Jack and Rose. And we all know that the Titanic will sink. It was obvious that Cal would be one of the victims. Yet, he wasn't. After chasing Jack and Rose to the sinking Titanic, Cal relents and decides to get off the ship with a lost child. How much she has in the world? Step back! Step back, I say! He is later seen looking for Rose aboard the Carpathia, and Rose's voiceover informs us that he apparently took his own life after the Wall Street crash of 1929. It was the Great Depression that claimed Cal, not the Titanic. That's the last time I ever saw him. He married, of course, and inherited his millions. But the crash of 29 hit his interests hard. Number four, Robbie Ferrier, War of the Worlds. The ending of this movie is quite infamous, both for its anticlimactic conclusion, the aliens die from bacterial infection, and for the fact that Robbie inexplicably survives for the sake of a happy ending. Robbie fancies himself a hero, and he later decides to join the military to fight the alien invaders, despite no training, experience, equipment, or weapons. Just as Robbie rushes off, the hill is rocked by a massive explosion and the arrival of an alien tripod, both of which spell doom for anyone in the nearby vicinity. Robbie! And then Robbie shows up at his mother's house at the end of the movie, and he and Ray share a touching father-son hug. His survival and subsequent journey to Boston is never explained. Number three, Randy Meeks, Scream. Throughout Scream, Randy is established as the resident horror movie nerd. Why would he want to kill his own girlfriend? There's always some stupid bullshit reason to kill your girlfriend. That's the beauty of it all, simplicity. Besides, if it gets too complicated, you lose your target audience. He knows all the tropes, and he's the one who eventually establishes the rules to his fellow high school students. Randy's profound knowledge of the horror genre, combined with his status as the funny character, should have guaranteed his death. There are a few fakeouts. In one scene, Ghostface hovers just above Randy as he drunkenly lies on the couch. In another, he's shot in the chest by Billy. Stu's flipped out. He's gone mad. We all go a little mad sometimes. No, Billy! But despite these close calls, Randy makes it out alive, even warning Sydney that Billy was likely to come back for one last scare. Unfortunately, Randy doesn't prove as lucky in the sequel. You wanna be one of the big boys? Huh? Manson? Bundy? OJ? Number two, Hans Landa, Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> Movie viewers were waiting roughly 150 minutes to witness Hans Landa's demise. Landa is one of the most despicable villains in modern movie history. 
played to absolute perfection by Christoph Waltz. His death would have proven incredibly satisfying. But this is Hans Landa we're talking about. The man is smart. Landa manages to strike a deal with the American government offering them Hitler and the end of World War II in exchange for his personal freedom and a pardon. Full citizenship for myself. Well, that goes without saying. And I would like the United States of America to purchase property for me on Nantucket Island as a reward for all the countless lives I've saved. The deal is accepted, and while Landa gets a nasty forehead swastika at the hands of Aldo, he nevertheless survives and presumably lives out the rest of his days in Massachusetts. I won't give you a something you can't take off. We can safely say that no one was expecting that outcome. You got something you rich? I think this just might be my masterpiece. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions where we're scratching our heads saying, how did they survive? Chris Mannix, The Hateful Eight. Despite his nasty wound, Mannix makes it to the end with Major Marquis Warren. Hey. <laughs> Can I see that Lincoln letter? Private Richard Rybin, Saving Private Ryan. Rybin was a minor character and one of the few to survive. Nick Van Owen, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Nick escapes and reappears with some rescue helicopters. It's okay, it's over now. Well, that's one souvenir they won't be taking with them. Phil Connors, Groundhog Day. Phil escapes the loop and continues life with Rita Hansen despite numerous attempts on his life. Today is tomorrow. It happened. You're here. I'm here. Chev Chelios, Crank. The man survives everything, even falling out of a helicopter. You're the greatest, baby. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We weren't expecting Indiana Jones to make it out of this one. For one thing, Harrison Ford was 65 years old when the movie was released, and it seemed like the one last hurrah for the iconic character before Ford threw in the towel. But more importantly, the movie contained an infamous scene involving a fridge and a nuclear weapon. Trapped in the Nevada test site during an atomic bomb test, Jones decides to hide inside a lead-lined refrigerator. Said fridge is then blasted through the air, rather than being pulverized. And Indiana shambles out like nothing happened. It's a ridiculous sequence even by Indiana Jones standards, and the series should have ended right then and there. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.